finding my favorite espresso in the Bay Area. Continuing in the East Bay, this time I'm visiting 11 shops from Berkeley to Fremont. Let's get started. Set 4 starts in Jack London Square in Oakland at Bicycle Coffee. Named that way because they deliver beans to local coffee shops on a bicycle, they now have an international presence. I also had a great first impression there because they were playing Nick Drake as I walked in. How does it taste? Wow, that smells really good. It smells kind of floral, but rich and tangy too. Wow, there's a lot going on. It has a good acidity up front. You definitely know that you're drinking espresso. It has an earthy flavor, but also a noticeable sweetness. That hint of a floral taste right at the top. It's subtle, but it adds a layer of dimension. The texture is pretty light, smooth, it's easy to drink. And the aftertaste is really pleasant. There's not a lot of aftertaste, but what is there is quite nice. It reminds me that I should keep drinking. Down the street is Peerless Coffee and Tea. It smells a little bit like a darker roast, but not quite as nutty as some of the other darker roasts. Yeah, there's almost like a roasted nut buttery flavor. Creamy. Oh wow, that's interesting. Wow. It's almost like cookie dough, the sweetness. It has a really thick, creamy body. It's really delicious. It does feel like a darker roast. There's definitely that heavily roasted flavor, kind of roasted chestnut or other nutty flavors. The texture is just so full and rich. It's so well balanced. Usually dark roasts to me are just overwhelmingly bitter with that roastedness, and it kind of overpowers the rest of the flavor, but there is a lot of depth and balance to this one. Last in set one is Asta Muerte Coffee. It's an actively inclusive co-op known for its empanadas and small bookstore in addition to coffee. Well, it smells really balanced, tasty. Oh, interesting. There's a little bit more sour in the flavor profile. I like it. It's a really well-roasted coffee. It's got nice acidity, not too much, but definitely like a tangy kind of citrusy feel to it. I'm getting citrus notes, like lemon, orange zest. More lemony, actually. A pretty bright flavor. <sighs> if I had to complain about something, it would be that there's not a ton going on at the base of it. It's very bright, airy, a lot of high-end, a lot of mid-range, but kind of falls flat like four to five seconds after I sip. <sighs> that is really good, though. All right, let's talk winners. All three places were really good. But to me, Bicycle had the most depth of flavor. I really wanted to drink more of that shot. It was well balanced, tasted super fresh. And for those reasons, Bicycle wins it for me. After a rainy night, I'm taking the E30 to Fremont and Devout Coffee. It's tucked against the foothills along a gorgeous stretch of road. How's the coffee? Mmm, that smells good. That is like archetypal espresso smell to me. Ooh, wow, yeah, that's nice. There's a pretty good sweetness up front, and it just feels full. It feels like it's completely filling my taste experience. Mm. It has some floral notes, a little bit of maybe lavender, but it's not too flowery. It's really well balanced. There's a good bright acidity up front, but it's definitely not too much. There's also like a soft quality to the mouthfeel. It's really like, it's not delicate, but it's soft. Like a, like a, like a stress ball, almost. <laughs> There's a lot going on, but none of the flavor elements feel like they're competing with each other. It's a very well-constructed shot. It's like the perfect amount of sweetness where it's not too sweet. Like I wouldn't say that this is a sweet espresso the way that some others have been. There's just the right amount of sweetness without sort of overpowering the flavor. It's really good. Heading into Oakland, Cafe Santana is a roaster near Mills College. Mm, it smells a little darker, stronger. That is a strong flavor. Mm, it's good though. It has a nice acidity, but it's very well rounded. It doesn't bite, but there's sort of a tangy, bright quality to it. But it's reserved, it's tamed. That's nice. I'm getting almost like a sunflower seed flavor note. Yeah, some sort of roasted nuts, like maybe even a roasted peanut. But there is a, a sweetness in there too. It's almost like a Butterfinger candy bar flavor note. This one also has a very like round, velvety texture to it. It's quite pleasant. 
The aftertaste does have a little bit more bitterness. I imagine it's a little bit of a darker roast than Devout was, but it's good. It's not too harsh. It's definitely not overwhelmingly roasty the way that like a full dark roast coffee can be. This feels like kind of a middle ground. That's nice. It's well balanced. Next is Hive, the place to be. In addition to the great name, they have a carbon-free roasting process that uses a ventless roaster and carbon-free electricity. Mm, there's a really pretty crema on here. There's not a super strong scent. Mmm, interesting. That is so balanced. Wow. I'm getting a little bit of fruit. Kind of a bright acidity, like, I mean like a raspberry, but like a very tart raspberry. Maybe a little bit of like a green grape. It's a tart fruit flavor. A little bit of that lemongrass, more earthy vibe in there too. Yeah, the texture is, it's not as velvety soft as Devout or Cafe Santana, but it's very soft and reserved. Not in a bad way, like, it's just refined, maybe is the word. <laughs> it tastes really clean, fresh. It's, it, I imagine that this was freshly roasted. And the flavor really doesn't linger. That's what I mean by clean is there's hardly any aftertaste. It's really nice. This, this is unique. I've never tasted an espresso that was quite this clean and refined and reserved. Red Bay Coffee is a gorgeous and black owned shop with an industrial vibe and plenty of welcoming plants. Well, that smells really good. This one also has a really beautiful crema on top of it. Really creamy. Ooh, that's really yummy. That is really balanced and it's kind of that, it's kind of my archetype of what espresso should be. There's just a hint of sweetness there's a sort of tart acidity. There's a little bit of that lemongrass, earthy flavor underneath. It really hits all the marks. <sighs> Dang, that is really tasty. The texture is nice. It's a little bit thicker than some of the others this set, which I kind of like. The aftertaste is quite tart, which is unusual. Usually the, the aftertaste of an espresso either is like nothing or is bitter to me. But this one, you're left with this tartness. It's unique. Okay, let's talk winners. For me, it really comes down to Devout or Red Bay. The other two, Cafe Santana and Hive, were both good. They just, they were almost too refined and too reserved. They weren't intense enough for me to love it or hate it. They were good. I imagine both of those espressos would take milk really well for lattes and cappuccinos and that sort of thing. But as a plain espresso, Devout and Red Bay had very similar flavor profiles. They tasted like my archetype of what an espresso should be. Really balanced, but a lot going on. And it's really coming down to the texture. I can't really distinguish between them on flavor alone. And for me, Devout just had this super velvety, rich mouthfeel to it, to me, that I've never really experienced before. I've experienced things like that, but this was just kicking it up a notch. It was a really interesting texture, delicious flavor, of course, but it's really the texture that makes Devout win it for me. Set six starts at Pampas Cafe in Castro Valley. Oh, it smells like rich and fresh. It smells fresh. Ooh, wow, that tastes super fresh. There's a little bit of earthiness, but it's almost like a sweet earthiness. That's pretty well balanced, and there's hardly any aftertaste at all. It's very clean. I'm not getting a lot of bitterness. Yeah, maybe some berries, like a blueberry. There's kind of a tart sweetness. The acidity is very present. It's not like overwhelmingly so, but it is a very bright flavor. And that blueberry, maybe like an almond too, kind of like that Blue Moon ice cream vibe from some of the shops in San Jose. The color blue, no matter what. <laughs> the texture is really nice. It's kind of a perfect middle ground between thin and thick. This is really, really nice. There's almost a spicy quality, like clove or something like that. Not spicy like hot, but spiced. Next is Modern Coffee in downtown Oakland. They use beans from Kova, which is one of my favorite roasters in Portland, so I know they have good taste. How is it? It smells really nice, and it looks rich and kind of a caramel amber color. It also smells super fresh. <sighs> Ooh, wow. Oh, that's good. Wow. It has this velvety texture, 
and a decent amount of sweetness that hits your tongue right away. Almost like a, like you're sipping a hot chocolate or something like that. There's a present acidity, but it's kind of a medium level of acidity. Not too much. It just makes it a little bit lively. There's quite a lot of depth. Like even now, the flavor is still kind of changing and evolving on my tongue. It's a very rich texture along with that velvety quality. That's really nice. It has a sort of nutty backbone to it. There's that sweetness up front and there's just a nice kind of roasted chestnut flavor in the middle. And there's almost, it's kind of like molasses, a very deep sweetness at the bottom. It's, it's very full and rich. Gosh, yeah, I could drink a lot more of this. <laughs> Colosso Coffee was on my list, but they were closed. Their website says they've been closed through the shelter in place, which has been more than a year now. I'm hoping they pull through and I can try them out. On to 1951 Coffee Company. It has a public transit theme in Berkeley's lively Telegraph neighborhood. Hmm, that smells sweet. Ooh, interesting. It's a fairly subtle flavor. It's more on the earthy side, some lemongrass, like green. It's very fresh. It's super clean too. Very little aftertaste. It's super easy to drink. It's interesting, for how sweet it smelled, the taste isn't that sweet. It's solidly what I would call earthy in taste. The texture is pretty thin. It's light, easy to drink is, is what keeps coming up. It's a little bit of tanginess, but overall it's quite balanced. I can imagine this mixing well in milk drinks. All right, who wins? A bit of a bummer that Coloso was closed. Hopefully I'll get to try them sometime soon, but these three were really good. Definitely difficult to pick between them. 1951 and Pampas were so clean and clear, so much clarity, really easy to drink. They Both of them had hardly any aftertaste. It was really interesting just how like easy to drink and clean they were. Modern uses one of my favorite roasters, Kova. Actually, the first coffee that I ever enjoyed was at their shop in Portland. I've used their beans at home. I know they're super good and Clearly, the people at Modern also know how good they are, because the shot from Modern had so much going on. It was really, really rich in flavor. It had like, like a long evolution of the flavor too. Like the beginning of the sip tasted one way, the middle of the sip tasted a different way. 10, 20 seconds after the sip, it still was like continuing to evolve and, and change flavor. And I really, really enjoyed that. It was the most bold flavor. It had the b most identity to it. And just as a plain espresso, Modern wins it for me. The winners of sets four through six are Bicycle, Devout, and Modern. And that completes round one in the East Bay. Next, I'm headed to San Francisco to check out plenty more great coffee. Until then, stay tuned for more, and thank you for exploring with me. I really can't distinguish between a really loud train.